got to sing that again. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty state. today we just lift our hearts and we say thank you for your promises today thank you for the word of God that's working and real and active in my life today Lord thank you God because they're just not empty words today no they're they're the promises of God that are activated and alive in my heart and in my life and in my spirit today hallelujah oh I, yes we praise you this morning Lord as a company, company of, of praise. praise let this temple be a place oh yes where your glory is in praise as we stand in on worship you we worship you lord we worship you, you with lips of adoration we worship you as a company of praise let this temple be a place where your glory is embraced as we stand in awe and worship you let's give jesus a great big hand clap of praise today hallelujah Come on, church. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's our soon coming victorious King. Amen. And oh, how we join the angelic choir. We enjoy, we join the angelic host of heaven. And we clap our hands and we lift our voice. Hallelujah. And we declare worthy is the Lamb of God, which was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to you today, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen and amen. And the church said, amen. I said, and the church said, amen. oh, it's feeling good in here today. Amen. Wow, God is awesome. We'll find two or three next to you, beside you, in front of you, behind you. Love them in the Lord. Greet them one more time. Tell them that God is so pleased that he they are in his house today amen thank you for being here today hallelujah praise god our ushers are getting ready today and we're going to receive and worship the lord through our tithing and our giving this morning oh thank you lord the bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And then that is the truth. Amen. And I know that this church, on many levels, our church is a very giving church, a very loving church. And we thank you for your faithfulness to God. So today is another opportunity for us to tithe and sow seed into the 
church and to the ministry here, and we want to do so for God's glory. Amen. Um, while they're getting prepared, I want to just briefly say uh, thanks to Brother Dean and our men's ministry for the great outing we had yesterday. Um, Brother Dean did an awesome job uh, ministering and song and playing, and he had a little, I was fascinated, he had a little mechanism when he played, he could play rhythm and then click this thing and then it would play back, loop the rhythm over and then he could go back the second time and add in all the, all the lead licks, amen, and then we just got to sit there and soak that up. And we, we really rejoiced. We, he went back to the old blue hymn book. And, uh, I mean, we just, we had a time just listening, reminiscing, and singing along with some of the old hymnals of the church. Aren't you glad for the hymnals of the church? Amen. Blessing through the years, and they're still a blessing to us. And so I wanted to thank him publicly. Thank you, Brother Dean, for sharing. And we had a beautiful breakfast. Sister Pat, honey, I don't know anybody makes any better gravy than you except my wife, praise God. That's my disclaimer, hey amen. No, I'm just kidding. That's awesome. We have a great time on our men's ministry. I tell you, you put Pat's gravy with my wife's biscuits. Now you got something right there. <laughs> amen. It's the bottom part. <laughs> Lagana's biscuits, we like them well done around our house sometimes. <laughs> amen. Oh, ain't the Lord good? Woo, glory, I tell you. We had a good spirit, and it just, <laughs> no. Thanks to the ladies. I know they had their luncheon yesterday and had a great time. And uh, it's awesome when we can get together and fellowship. And uh, in two weeks now, I want to say two things. In two weeks at Camp Nakile, we're having our super family Saturday family fest. Uh, I think I got all the names in there that time. But... Uh, this is nothing new to us. We've been doing this, participating in this for many years. And this year, the volleyball team's already started practicing. If you want to get engaged in volleyball or basketball, see our dear leader, our dear captain over here, Brother Chris Payne, a.k.a. Biggie Payne. And he'll get you suited up, lined up. And uh, last year, we had an old-timers team, but I think the old-timers team has retired, praise God. Amen. I think we retired. But we always, I, now just, I'm not bragging or anything, but don't we have some trophies around here, Chris? What we got? Volleyball and basketball? Volleyball and tug of war. So we're actually defending our volleyball and our tug of war championships. So. We need a lot of prayer this year, amen. That's a lot to live up to. But honestly, beyond all that, it's just a great time to go out and enjoy the beautiful campground facility that God has blessed our uh, fellowship with out at Camp Nakao. And it's just beautiful. Hopefully we have some great weather. Bring your lawn chairs. There's things you can purchase, very reasonable, very cheap as far as hamburgers. You don't even have to take a lunch if you don't want to. If you want to, you can. You can take however much food you want to take and spread it out. But if you don't want to fool it, they got the food there. I mean, it's just very convenient. And there's horseshoes. Um, the thing that uh, we do around here sometimes, can't think of it right now, with the bean bags, praise God. Cornhole, yeah. Brother Sam, Brother Tom, Brother Odell, Brother Glenn, Brother Mike, we got some cornhole champs around here, amen. They're good. But um, there's that. There's stuff for the kids. It's just a great time. Two weeks from now, uh, August 25th, I believe it is. So 24th, I'm sorry. So mark that down. Be sure to go stay. Go early, stay late. You'll have a great time. Okay, the other thing I wanted to mention real quickly is uh, September, for the last time, as far as I know, uh, the National Quartet Convention is coming to Louisville. And we've been doing this around here a long time, too. We've been taking advantage of that. And this year, Sister Frida is collecting the funds for our tickets again this year to go as a church group. We have a wonderful time. What, what is the date again, Frida, that we're going this year? 10th. Is that a Tuesday? Yeah, is that a Tuesday? That's what I thought, Tuesday. 
so see Frida tickets are twenty twenty two dollars uh, we need that money uh, as soon as we can so we can make our reservations and have everybody's order in so see Frida after church and get even more details by the way while I'm mentioning that um, also the row arcs they like to we like to have them come through and we're making some uh, tentative plans uh, for them to be with us uh, during that time as well. So you might want to remember that as well. Okay, I love you today. Let's bow our heads as we ask the blessing today on the offering. Father, thank you for your gracious goodness to us, your, your blessings. Lord, we just, as we were worshiping a moment ago, Father, we do declare, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you for the time to tithe and give. We love you today. We bless you. We honor you. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And again, the church said amen. Let's give. God bless you. Thank you for your tithing and giving today. I wanted to say uh, another thing as well as we get ready for the uh, message today. Uh, man, it is an awesome honor and privilege to have back in the house today none other than Sister Nova Divine. <laughs> Woo! Amen, amen, amen. She's like Michael Jordan. She kept telling us, I'll be back. Amen. I'll be back. Guess what, Nova? You're back. You're back. Praise God. And man, it's always good to have divine things in the house. Amen. And she's divine. Nova divine. We love you, Nova. We missed you. And I expect to see Marty before long. And uh, I'll tell you, it's been a long journey for these precious ladies but God's faithful and we love them today and I would be remiss if I didn't welcome back the honeymooners you know the honeymooners aren't we proud of Dallas and Brittany let's give them a great God bless you they survived the honeymoon they're on a good start here aren't they praise God welcome home guess what Welcome to the real world. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. God's so good. Okay, well, we're talking about prayer. How many believes God answers prayer today? Let me see your hand. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes circumstances. Prayer changes situations. Well, prayer actually doesn't, but guess what? The God we pray to does. Hallelujah. How many of those God's in control this morning? Amen. And he has called us to prayer. He's called us to be a praying people, a praying church. One place Jesus told them in the temple, my house shall be called a house of prayer prayer hallelujah and we talked wednesday night and i'm going to refer to a scripture i'm not going to preach what i preach wednesday night but i'm going to refer to luke chapter 11 because it's such a powerful chapter about prayer and we know that the very first verses in luke chapter 11 the word of god describes what is commonly referred to as the disciples prayer the lord's prayer part of it anyway and it says it came to pass in a certain place when he was praying that uh, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. How many knows praying sometimes is something that has to be learned? We are taught sometimes. Anybody have a praying mother or father and they help teach you how to pray? 
It's just like a, anything else you experience in life. If you're going to be a disciple, follower of Jesus, there's things we're taught. There's things we learn, and we are all lifelong learners. Well, the disciples wanted to learn about prayer. Teach us, Jesus. Teach us how to pray. And he began to give them this model prayer in verse 2, that when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Anybody thankful he is our daily bread today? Amen. He is that daily bread, day by day. You know, the one thing about that I love is he doesn't promise us, you know, uh, prayer or, excuse me, bread and provision uh, by the boatload. He says, day by day, I'll give. In fact, I'll give you enough for today. And if you'll trust me and keep walking with guess what? When you get to the next day, I'll have some more bread for you the next day. It's kind of like the wilderness journey. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God gave them manna from heaven, bread from heaven. But he didn't just give them a bunch to put in the storehouses and a bunch to put in their cupboards. He gave them fresh manna day by day. And that reminded me the reason why Jesus teaches us to pray for daily bread is because what Jesus has for your life, what Jesus has for my life is nothing that's stale, nothing that could be spoilt. God wants to give you and I and our walk with him, our relationship with him something fresh from heaven's oven each day that we get up and live for God. Somebody say amen if you believe that. Daily bread. Fresh bread. Hallelujah. How many of those stale biscuits are no good? Praise God. Don't want no stale biscuits. How many like hot biscuits? Amen. He gives us hot biscuits. Okay. He says, and forgive us our sins in this model prayer, and we forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know, when we get to forgiveness, we need to remember, too, not only is provision something that's needed daily, but forgiveness is also something that's needed daily. Amen, Pastor. Because there's times that we need to repent and be forgiven. There's times that we need to be willing to forgive others. And if we would really be transparent today, both of those things happen often and probably sometimes daily in our lives as Christians and as believers. He goes on to say, Lead us not into temptation. You know, this is a good prayer model. We need to pray something similar to this. We don't have to pray these exact same words every day. But I think we can gather from this model of prayer that prayer in any form, in any outline, or in, even if it's just spontaneous prayer, prayer is communion with God, and communion with God needs to take place every day in the life of a believer. I think that's something I really get strongly from this model of prayer. Forgive daily. Provision daily. And he says, temptation will come daily. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And, of course, we know another place in the Scripture talks about, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm glad Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And I'm glad I can read this today. And it can be applied to my life. And I can learn and glean some things about my daily prayer walk with God as well. And then he tells a little parable about prayer. And I'm going to kind of rush through this because this really isn't the, the crux of what the Lord has sent me here to share today. But it says that in this little parable, it says that which of you shall have a friend shall go to him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me. And I have nothing to set before him. The parable is this. This man has a man come to him in the lateness of the hour on his journey needing something to eat. He doesn't have anything to give him. So he says to himself, I know what I'll do. I'll go to my neighbor's house who's my friend. And I'll knock at his door. And I'll see if he'll give me something for the person who's come to my place. First of all, I notice he's not asking for himself, but he's an intercessory person. And he is pleading for the person who has come to him. He's not asking for bread for himself. He is asking bread, Sam, for a visitor that has come to him, a friend of his. So he's asking for others. You know, prayer, we talked about this some 
earlier today in prayer time, prayer, there's nothing wrong with praying for ourselves, and we need to pray daily over ourselves and for ourselves each and every day. It's a part of our spiritual formation in Christ. Is confessing God's word and praying for ourselves and praying for our needs and praying for our families. And it, oh, that's a vital part of our prayer life, our prayer walk with God. But just as vitally important is we don't have to be so self absorbed in prayer but we, that we never pray for the needs of others. In fact, that's called intercessory prayer. And God has called us to personal prayer, corporate prayer, and intercessory prayer. And part of intercessory prayer is praying and asking and believing God for the needs of others. How many knows we need to be intercessors for the nation we live in today? We need to be praying for families. We need to be praying for our city. We need to be praying, pleading the blood of Jesus for neighbors and family members. And, but even beyond, our world needs prayer today. Hallelujah. And so we have to be intercessory prayers. And so this man in this parable was sort of an intercessory prayer person and he he says I've got to find a friend of mine who'll give me so I can give to this person so he goes and finds his friend I'm paraphrasing the story but he begins to knock at the door and it's late and the person in the house says basically to himself don't bother me trouble me not it's late it's midnight my door's shut the kids are in bed who in the world is coming to me at this late hour let me just paraphrase it a little more. Go away. Go away. It's late. But what happens is, look at the little story Jesus tells. He says, verse 8, I say to you, though he will not rise and give him two things. One, because he's his friend. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he got curious and just made sure it wasn't just, you know, somebody to rob him or something. Maybe he just sort of opened the blinds a little bit or peeked around the curtains or whatever they had in that day. But he caught a glimpse of the person and he recognized that this was not just a stranger. This wasn't just anybody. This was his friend. And how many are glad today for good friends in your life? Friends that you know will get up. I don't care how late the hour is. They'll help you and come to your aid when you need. How many knows that's a real friend right now? That's a real friend. I don't need a friend that just gives me lip service. You know, I don't need a friend that just says they're my friend. I need a friend that when things are bad, when the, when the hour is late, when the door is shut and the kids are in bed, they'll say, hey, it's just not anybody. It's my friend. I'm going to do whatever I've got to do to help my friend. And that's exactly what was going on in this little story. The second thing it says is because it was his friend and also because of his importunity. In other words, his continual persistence, his continual coming, his begging, if you will. And so the, the picture that it's painting here is that he didn't just knock once or ring the doorbell once and then go to the next place. He said, wait a minute. This is my friend. If I could just get his attention... If he can just see who it is, if he can just know I'm out here and I'm the one in need, so I'm going to have importunity. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to, if I have to beg, I'm going to beg for the need that has come before me. I'm going to plead and I'm going to knock and I'm going to keep on knocking. Did you know sometimes...